Hello, this is Lai here, and today I'm going to show you the four things that you need to be able to create a fully functional lab that can also act as your security operation center or your personal home lab cyber range. Um, the first thing that you're going to need is a little bit of knowledge. You need to be able to understand networking infrastructure services and if you don't understand those things uh, it's going to be a little challenging to create a safe environment where you can practice security skills but um, the good thing is Google and um, videos like this are also out there to help you create that safe environment so you can create your own cyber range you need to be able to have, you know, a little bit of knowledge, know what a domain controller is, know what an IPS or IDS is before you start doing this. I highly suggest, you know, creating a basic lab with a domain controller and your own little infrastructure that you can monitor before you start playing with security and vulnerable machines in your environment. The second requirement for you to be able to create a lab that looks like mine where you have a live environment is you're going to need some hardware this is the biggest barrier to entry for a lot of people and it was for me too is because hardware can be very expensive and uh, for me i was able to go on uh, craigslist and ebay i spent a couple months just looking around looking and uh, monitoring what was going on and I ended up settling for a Dell R710. Mine is actually uh, 16 cores and um, I bought mine on Craigslist for $150. So if you spend some time, look around, look on Craigslist, ask your employer if they have a server that they're getting rid of and you just explain that you need to learn and most employers, if they care about you, they'll be able to give that to you before they recycle it. So I bought mine for $110, like I said, on Craigslist, and um, I was able to upgrade it to 96 gigs of RAM, as you can see here. And I have actually 16 cores and four NICs, which is uh, plenty for what I do. So the hardware part is the part that you need to spend some time on. Don't just buy the first server that you see. You'll probably find that same server for cheaper if you look around. And uh, eBay and Craigslist are the two places that I suggest. And you can also try uh, Facebook Marketplace. A lot of employers are, you know, retiring their hardware. So you need second option is uh, hardware. Then you're also going to need the software. You need a hypervisor to begin with. This is my uh, vCenter. As you can see, I'm running VMware 6.5. You can also get this same VMware for free. Uh, you won't get all the functionality after 60 days, uh, but it works. Just get VMware and you can also uh, get licenses for VMware for uh, home use. If you're a VMware V-Expert, which I will explain later in the video on how to get a lot of other free software for free. And then um, after you get your hypervisor, you're going to need to get some servers to create domain controllers in your different environments. I use a uh, server 2012, which I got a couple years ago. Uh, you can also use um, Linux. I also use CentOS in, in uh, my other environments. So you can pick which one you like, but uh, if your employer is upgrading to Server 2016, you can ask them if you can use the 2012 options, or you can just buy your own on eBay or Craigslist. It's a very nice investment. You need a domain controller. I run a domain controller for my home, and I also run multiple domain controllers in my uh, different environments on my ESXi. You're going to need IDS, IPS, and some um, firewalls. For firewall, my uh, drug of choice is Sophos. 
Sophos is a home use. You can get that uh, for free if you sign up with your work or company uh, email address. It's a great way to learn how firewalls work and how um, you can set up some rules and which traffic can be allowed. I use this Sophos uh, as a UTM for my main router at home. I also use it for my uh, virtualized environments because it's great. I can tell exactly what traffic is coming in. And the good thing is Sophos also reports to my log and events manager. So this uh, 192.168.2.100 is my Sophos uh, router somewhere in this environment that is also reporting about everything that's happening. So you're going to need that firewall. As for clients, uh, you're going to need some vulnerable machines, obviously. And uh, for me, I get my vulnerable machines from Vulnhub. Vulnhub is great because there's all kinds of machines out there. And if you look up, uh, there's a few that are good. There's a, some that are just, you know, okay. But um, you can download VMs from here. You can import them into your uh, environment. Then you can exploit them. My only uh, advice is that just make sure they don't have internet access because people are doing a lot of port scans. If you look in my login events manager here, you can see that these people, as you can see, my uh, firewall is dropping traffic from the internet. And there's a lot of uh, people out there who are just scanning the internet for vulnerable machines. And you don't want to be the one that they found a machine with internet access. Make sure that your network is segregated. And if you follow this uh, video series, you learn how to create access lists, VLANs, in a, and be able to actually isolate these networks. And also how to set up your um, so for UTM to make sure that it doesn't actually have any internet access. So stay tuned for that. And the final and um, obvious thing is you are going to need some time. You need to dedicate some time. Labbing and being able to create an environment like this is not something that you can do when time permits. You actually have to be intentional. You have to create a schedule. You have to Set some time apart to say, you know what, setting the night from 8 p.m. up to midnight, I'm going to be labbing. And that's what all I'm going to do is create my lab and make sure that everything is, looks good. You need to set up some time. And uh, as a bonus point, I wanted to share with you guys that uh, you can actually get most of this software for free. Not only can you get it for free, but... Uh, you, you also don't have to pay or do anything other than share your experiences. For me, I was able to get most of the software for SolarWinds and everything through the VMware VXPECT program. I was blogging for one year because I wanted to share my experience and I learned that, well, because I'm blogging, I can get free licenses. So I ended up becoming a VMware VXPECT last year and I got all this software, including SolarWinds, Veeam, and all this for free. And these vendors will give you free software for you to test, hoping that you put it in your environment or you blog about it so they can get visibility. But that's okay with me because I also like free software. I don't want to pay for a lot of things. So I'm able to get uh, my VMware licenses for free through the VMware VXPECT. I'm getting my SolarWinds license. I'm able to get... Uh, devolutions, remote desktop access, and my password manager, and backup software. I mean, you you name it, it's out there. You get a lot of uh, freebies through the VMware VXPECT program. And there's a lot of other programs out there, like Microsoft MVPs also get the same uh, kind of free software. So if you're looking for free software, just make sure that you can actually get it through there. And in addition to that, I have my own uh, blog where I keep up with most of uh, the things and I'll be posting these videos on this blog and I usually just write things but now I just learned that through my VMware VXPECT program I'm actually able to get free software from Camtasia as you can see here to create these videos so Camtasia is giving me free software to create videos so which is one more reason why you probably want to apply for the next uh, VMware VXPECT program, and you can find more information here. 
So in our next video, I'll be showing you guys the first steps that you need to be able to create your own cyber range.